Hello, North Haven family. This is Tim Wallace with the Connect team at North Haven. Today, I have the privilege of having a conversation with longtime member Jim McBride. Hello, Jim. Good morning. So, Jim, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you come from? Well, I was born and raised in Vicksburg, Mississippi. A few of my friends have told me that explains everything. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's what they say about me from Arkansas. So there you go. <laughs> now, did you go to school there in Mississippi? I went to all the way from elementary to high school with mostly the same group of people uh -huh. in my classes. I knew everybody well. And then I went to Mississippi State University because I always wanted to go there. But I was yeah. offered a football scholarship and got education and got my master's degree at Mississippi State in civil engineering. Wow. Good for you. Excellent. Well, Mississippi's kind of a ways way away from Dallas. How did you wind up in Dallas? Uh, by working for IBM. Yeah. I stand for I've been moved. <laughs> and I moved around a lot in the first, you know, I moved about every second year. For promotions and stuff. Oh my! Good for you. Across the country, and IBM reorganized, which you move again somewhere, etc. But I moved five times the first twelve years. Oh my! <laughs> and you settled here in Dallas, huh? Uh, I settled here, and uh, in fact, got offered a job to go to Atlanta for working for Mike Rosen over there, but. Uh, but I didn't want to go. I ended up deciding I had developed a life family by being in a place long enough that I was going to stay with IBM, but I was going to give up moving get even off when I was offered promotions and just to uh, develop my own life and, and friends and so forth, you know. When you move every year, you end up without with learning a skill about finding another doctor in the new town every year. And that gets irritating <laughs> after a while. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. Well, now, how did you come to North Haven? Tell me that story. Well, I uh, came here. I wasn't going to church. I was raised a Presbyterian church, but I kind of, in my early 20s, went away from going to church because mm -hmm. I was gay and didn't think people really wanted to to be supportive in other ways with me. But in the process of that, I met some gay people and we got to be good friends and they kept inviting me to Oklahoma United Methodist Church. So I finally decided to go and ended up spending about four or five years there before we were kicked out uh, oh, wow. by a new preacher who preached against us, which would encourage us to leave. Yeah. So we, so we did, that's kind of how I got back here. So I ended up going to Peace of Hope and spent 16 years there. Wow. And then uh, we closed the counseling center, which I was director of at that point in time. And uh, I decided to look around at three places. One of them was Oakland because I heard it changed a lot of new acceptance of people there. Uh -huh. And uh, went back to the Cathedral of Hope, that's where I was going, and I, and I went to um, North Haven Methodist Church. Yeah. To, and, and, I, and I saw a bunch of people I knew previously and gone to church with previously at lunch afterwards and see the friends and stuff. And so uh, I kept trying that for over, for over a year before I decided to join. Yeah. And uh, it all worked out really well. I joined there and Stan joined a different church. We had met and been together a while. So uh, that's, uh, that's how I got to it. And I've been in North Haven ever since. I've been happy with it. Good. Good deal. Now, I know that you like to help people. And I know that you did a coming out workshop. Will you talk about that a little bit for us? Yes, it's... Uh, 
I felt, especially when I when I was at the Cleveland Club, that we had a lot of people who were struggling with gay issues, and uh, I decided I wanted to. I'd gone to, back to school in counseling and got off a job as directorship there. And uh, while I still hadn't had a lot of experience, most of my counselors were a lot more experienced than I was. And uh, oh, in the process of being in the counseling center, I saw so many gay people that were struggling with issues that uh, mainly were trying to keep their, trying to keep themselves in the closet, live a double life and stuff. And so I decided to uh, see if I could develop a, a class or a workshop which I end up calling the journey workshop or the coming out workshop. I changed the name because uh, at one point in the time, but uh, but the whole essence of it was to get enough people there that could share their stories. So I would, you know, offer the class and we offered it free of charge for some of the time. And uh, try to get them to relax tell a few people funny stories, have them introduce themselves, to associate with what you heard them say about themselves. So when you're talking to them, you can bring it back up. If you saw some comment to, to make for them, to help them look at things a little differently, et cetera, like that. Wow. And uh, I called it, what I was really doing was facilitating, creating the environment and then create and listen to what they, they were saying and picked out something to play back to and to give them a different target. And it all worked out really well. When I'd gotten the format for it from the churches in Canada, from Montreal Church up there, and uh, it was written for men, so we quickly rewrote it for men and women and wow. opened the doors and uh, shot for as many as 12 to 15 people to make a class. Uh, end up with some of them with just only five people, but they turned out to work. It turned out to work anyway. Yeah. You know, no matter what, what I had in there, I uh, just took a different time element. So it went real, really well. So over 18 years of doing it at Cathedral of Hope for nine years, and then uh, Travis Jordan recommend I do it at, at North Haven. I did it there nine years, usually about three classes a year. Wow. Uh, and uh, probably I've done over 450 to 500 people in the mm -hmm. three classes a year, getting 10 to 15 people, sometimes 20. Wow. Uh, but few of those, but sometimes five, you know, but mostly yeah. got 12 to 15. Wow, that's a great service that you were providing. And I'm sure that a lot of people are grateful to you for, for helping them move along in their life journey and, and, and determining who they are, who they are, and being comfortable with who they are. Well, and they, uh, I got a lot of satisfaction out of it because the feedback was excellent. I'm going to ask them a one page questionnaire, and they just constantly surprised me about how good they thought we were. You know, but the point was I was doing something which got them to reflect upon themselves and ha and what they were hearing from all the other people were most of it. I would get the topic started. My co-worker, Robert Jane Groiner, Stan's sister, who was at Trinity United Methodist Church in Duncanville, in Duncanville as a preacher. She mm -hmm. was going to uh, school at SMU at that point in time, back near that time, but she'd gotten her license. Now, at, at the, so I had pastor at Trinity down in Duncanville. Wow, so you had a lot of support to do Yeah, well, I had always had a female person with me to, because we include the women in, in, the, in the workshop, you know. And I wanted to be sure they were comfortable, but otherwise they wouldn't come as many of them wouldn't come. Right, right. And well, it's, it goes back to you creating a safe and comfortable environment for everyone involved. And that's it's very commendable for you to do that and to do it well, as many times what, as you do. That's what Phil's facilitating, though, is gives you the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. So you changed careers from from your civil engineer degree to a, a therapist. Yeah, and I've made I've changed lots of things over time, <laughs> but I've made a lot of good decisions. They turned out good. You know, yeah. I mean, wasn't anything outstanding, but. I never got damaged by it. I got to where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do and et cetera. But 
But I spent uh, for, uh, about 25, well, 25 years with IBM. Mm. Had a 30-year retirement, so I stayed uh, in the counseling center. I stayed until I got eligible for that, getting paid some by them, and you know, was willing to lose my job and take a, a buyout to, to leave it 25 years. But it was the best decision I made. But I wasn't sure at the time because I made a very good salary. And uh, I surprised a few people when I left. So <laughs> you exact a few executives. So well, tell me this, what what makes you happy? Uh, I like people. Stan won't agree with that because I unload on him all my <laughs> concerns. But I love what he brings me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh well we've been together how long, Stan? Thirty five years. 35 years. So Wow, congratulations. Yeah, we got married the first opportunity. That's great. Congratulations. That's that's just wonderful. That's just wonderful. Well, how do you want to be remembered, Jim? Well, I've had a lot of recognition all my life, so it's not something I just strive for. I'm not even sure why. I come up, I've come up with some reasons internally. Uh, I'll give you an example of one of them is that when I was in high school, I seemed to be very popular. And a lot of people wanted to associate with me stuff. But you know, in high school, there's always cliques. And so I joined every one of them that asked me. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so I was, you know, I knew everybody. And, and enjoyed talking to him and stuff and got to school early because my dad had to go to work early and he you know, dropped me off at school and there'd be a couple of people out there in the hallways that we'd sit down and talk on the floor and uh, you'd find the most interesting thing and some of them were not the most popular people in school and stuff, you know, were not really anybody talked to very much, but they were all very good people. I'm disappointed we canceled this past year, the, the reunion this, this year that we were going to have the, our 60th reunion. Wow. That goes way back. <clears throat> Is there anything about you that you'd like, that we don't know that you'd like to tell us? Something about yourself? Well, I'm you very know. proud of not, ha not having to worry about telling you I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's And you have fostered that in a lot of people, Jim, and I can just see that as... It, it, ha it helped move a lot of people along in the workshop. Yeah, I think that you've you've moved that and forward we, for a lot of people. Uh, and that gave me great satisfaction and fun. And, yeah. uh, and it meant something to me. Great. Jim, it's been great talking with you. I know people are going to love to hear this and hear from you. And it's, it's always a, a pleasure for me to see you at church and, and get a hello and, and just know that we're Still there supporting each other however we can. Thank you. Thank you very much, and we will see you again very soon. See you Sunday, hopefully. Bye-bye. That's right. Bye-bye.